Hello, my name is Ian and in today's video I will teach you the basics of programming in c -Sharp. The video is designed to be an introductory course to coding in general and it will take about one hour. So without further ado, let's jump into this. Okay, so we start with creating a new console app. We will name it Learn c -Sharp. So we have our very application here. As you can see, the first line using system suggests that we are importing namespace system, which consists of many basic classes handling input, output, and it is pre-installed library. Here we have our own namespace, which is called learn C -sharp as our project. And here we have our very first class. This class program is the most basic and entry class that's connected to the name of our file, which is program.csharp or cs. Here we have main method. Main method is different from our methods. And uh, the main difference between this and other classes is that the main method is executed as the first one in our program, in our terminal application. Here, let's start with running the application. Let's see what this application can do or cannot. As you can see, we have run the application, but it closed immediately after it. Why is that? It is because this line of code, console write line, hello world, displays this line, this text, hello world, and then there is nothing for the program to do. So it closes immediately. So in order to prevent that, let's give the program some instruction, which will make it wait for us to close it. So we go with console and instead of write line, and let's call a function read key. And then we put curly brackets. Inside the brackets, we don't have to put any arguments because Whenever we call a method, we put the name of the method. Here it's read key. However, the method read key, as you can see, belongs to class console. And if we do not put the console name here, the, our application will have problem because, because the application doesn't see any method called read key inside this program. There's only class program and there is this method main and there's no method called read key, but we have to, but we want to choose the method read key from the console class. So we have to put the console name here before the method name. So this dot means take from this one. Also, if there is an object inside an object, we would go console dot something dot something. So this second something refers to the first one. Here, when we run the application, we can see that now it prints the hello world title. And then the second line, which is console read key is executed. And it is patiently waiting for us to press any key. So let's press any key. E. I pressed E. The application terminated. All right, so we have very, very, very basic input and output. This one, this line is an output. What have I done? As you can see, I've put two slashes and after everything that is put after two slashes is considered a comment. That's why it is marked in green. Comments are not executed and are treated as not part of the code. So it is very safe to use comments in order to explain some stuff that's inside the code. It's either for you or for other people that would be working on this code. So here we have output and here we have input. So in order not to lose the very first bit of the knowledge we have, we'll call, we'll put this little comment here. Okay, but let's do something more. For example, as we can see, when we run the application, it has a very bad title. We want to change the title. Here I want to teach you basics of C-sharp. However, programming in general 
is done in order to solve some problem. So in order to do something useful, we need to create application that's useful. So I wanted to show you how to create throughout this whole tutorial, how to create bartender application. So let's change this line. Instead of hello world, very basic one, let's say, well, come to the bartender app. And also let's change the title. Let's make a section here, we'll call init, where we will put all the stuff that we want to initialize at the very beginning of the application, such as changing the title of our application. So how to change the title of the application? We have to access the console class one more time. So let's go and let's access this class. So we put full stop and then we can see what can we use here. As a matter of fact, what we want to use is not a method, it's a variable called title. It's a string. What's a string? String is one of the variables used in C Sharp. And also it's a variable that's used in nearly every uh, programming language. String is just a set of characters. So this here, this sentence is also a string and any string is colored in orange by default. So when we want to change the title, we have to use the equation symbol and then we put two quoting marks and here we put the string we want. So bartender, bartender up. At the end of the line, in order not to get errors, we put semicolon. Then when we wrap, run the application, we run the application and we see that it's indeed called bartender app. Welcome to the bartender app. Now when we press any key, it closes. All right, that's what we know already. What we want to do, let's play with variables. So I mentioned that string is a variable. Okay, let's declare some variable. So at the very beginning, let's make a new section we'll call it variables. And here we can declare our very first variable of type of string. So we call it string title. And then we'll give it a value of bartender app 2.0 and its version. At the end, we have to put semicolon, of course. And here, instead of hard coding the bartender app name, we can just put our title variable. And right now, first we declare the variable, declaration of variable is like this, then we assign the value, and this is the symbol of assigning action, we assign the value of bartender app volume 2.0. And there, then we call the property, which is a variable, of the console class, and the property name is title, and we assign it value to our own title value. I like Visual Studio and also other IDEs because, for example, when you highlight the variable, we can see wherever it is used. So it told it, it highlights the same variables, the same methods, the same object as a matter of fact. When we now run the application, we can see that it indeed changed the title to the new one. All right. So we have our first variable. Okay. So let's stick with the bartender theme. We want to make a drink. First of all, we need a drink name. So let's make a new variable. This variable will be drink name. And let's say it is, let's say it's Cuba Libre. In order to make this Cuba Libre, we need ingredients. What are the ingredients of Cuba Libre drink? It will be Press string one, ingredient one, it will be cola. Or let's say, oh yeah, cola. Let's say Coke. More British version. Then we have string ingredient two. It will be room. Doesn't matter what color and ingredient 
3, which will be lemon. For those who are not willing, oh, sorry, and string ingredient 4, obviously ice. For those that do not drink, well, just follow the example because I want to illustrate it better. For those that do drink and find this uh, ingredient list of Cuba Libre as not compelling, well, I'm sorry, but it's a poor student version. It doesn't really matter. We have a list of ingredients. Yes, so we have five, we have six new variables of type string and we have assigned a value of everyone. However, if you have, let's say, 100 ingredients, then making a list like this would be very tiring and uh, not so... It's not optimal, to say the least. What if we could make a variable that can store all those four ingredients? Well, let's try. Let's call a string keyword and let's say ingredients ingredients okay so we have a variable of type string but this variable can store one value as those other uh, variables that we have already initialized in order to change this variable into what's so called an array of string types we have to put after the string keyword we have to put square brackets and right now we can assign it a few values for example in order to assign a few values we put those values inside curly brackets so it will be coke then we put comma and we put room comma put lemon comma and we put ice all right, so let's now use it. Let's write a new line. We'll copy this one. And if you want to make a, and now we want to put the name Cuba Libre. So in order to do that, we leave space. We put space here plus, and then we put the drink name variable and if you run it you'll see that it prints both things one next to another so there is also it's important to remember about putting spaces if you want to make a cuba libre plus and then another piece of hard-coded string comma you need What do we need? We need plus ingredient one plus space plus also can be comma plus ingredient two ingredient three ingredient four. When we run the application, we can see our very first bartender app giving us some recipe. If you want to make a Cuba Libre, you need Coke, Room, Lemon, Ice, which is nice. Okay, but we have this one string and we want to use this array instead of the list of the strings. So we'll remove them and as a matter of fact, using array is very simple. This array consists of one, one, two, three, four items. And every item has its index inside the array. In order to access, in order to access the item in the array, we have to call this array. So first of all, we remove, for example, this first one, I'll call it in ingredients. However, we cannot print the whole 
I mean, we can, but we don't want to print the whole. We want to access only one item. We put square brackets and then we have to put the number of the item we want to access. This one has number index zero. This one is one, two, three. So when we have some number of items that inside the array, we say the array is size of four and it's always the first one has index of zero and the last has index of the, the size of an array minus one. So here we'll go ingredient zero, ingredients one, ingredients two, and here ingredients four, sorry, three. As you can see, nothing changes, but it's more it's more elegant way. Let's see what other types of variables we can use. We have integer. An integer can store a number and we want, for example, to store a number of drink of people because we, don't, we want to know how many pieces of every ingredients we need in order to make drinks for everybody in the room, for example, number of people. So it needs to be a whole number. However, if you want to say, for example, that you need to have half of a lemon, you cannot use integer. You have to use float or double. There is little to no difference between those two types for beginners. If you are more advanced, then you will know the difference anyway. So there's no point in wasting time on explaining it right now. The difference is in precision in general. So we'll use float. Let's say float amount of and then we can put, for example, half. However, the notation or the syntax, so the way we use the language, for example, the syntax, uh, one of the rule of the notation is that when you make a name of a variable that there cannot be a space. So if you want to make a name that consists of several words, you use this kind of notation. So we will put one word, then instead of space, you put another next to it. However, you started with a capital letter instead of, for example, doing it like this. This is considered a bad practice. And here the notation is that when you use float, you have to put F at the end. It just means that it is a float. So it represents a single precision floating point number, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't really matter. It's boring stuff. If you use double amount, amount of number two, you don't have to use the F number. However, the difference between float and double is that double is double uses more memory and uh, because it's bigger. I mean, it's the, we'll use floats fourth or fifth if counting double. Most important type of variable is bool. Bool is party happening, happening. And, and the value that it can have is true or false. So it's the Boolean type of value. Okay, we can, we know what kind of variables we can use in C sharp. So we have four basic types and here we have also double. And also we know how to use arrays using arrays of different types of variables is the same. So for example, for integer, we could also put brackets and then we have to use curly brackets here in order to put, for example, a few variables. Yes. Okay. I will remove those. What we want to do is let's make a, an array of float. We call it first float brackets. We call it amount of 
ingredients and here we'll put and here we'll put amount of every ingredient we need for one Cuba Libre. So for Coke, let's say it will be 1.3 F. 1.3 is in, let's say, liters. Room would be, or let's say in milliliters, it would be better to calculate. 300. Yeah, more or less. Room, let's say 50. Yeah. Lemon, it will be in pieces. So let's say it will be slices, three, two, yeah, ice, ice in cubes, 10 cubes. And in order not to forget, let's make a, let's make a new string array, which will say unit of ingredients. So for Coke, it will be milliliters. For room, for room, it will be milliliters. For lemon, it will be slices. For ice, it will be cubes and semicolon. Okay, but that's for one person, right? Yes. So if we want to make, okay, let's have our app tell us what is the amount of ingredients we need. So first it says that for Cuba Libre you need blah, 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 but then we want to, it to say how much of blah, blah, blah we need. So we go with console dot right line. And here we will say you need and plus amount amount of ingredients zero plus unit of ingredients and also zero plus and let's use copy paste we have to copy paste it a few times so this is zero zero this is one one this is two two and we copy paste it one more time to make free free and we don't need this at the end just semicolon we run okay welcome to the bartender app if you want to make a cuba libre you need coke room lemon ice you need 300 milliliters of coke all right let's change it so we have only one line that says how much of anything we need so you need you will need this amount of plus and then we'll make ingredients zero plus plus and we put this little alteration before every comma. So we've got ingredients zero, here will be ingredients one of ingredients two and at the end and here plus ingredients three. And then we will just copy paste this one if you want to make a drink name plus we will replace this one and then we don't need this line All right if you want to make cuba libre if you want to make a cuba libre plus space comma no sorry here you will need this. All right. Now let's run the application. Welcome to the bartender app. If you want to make a Cuba Libre, you will need 300 milliliters of Coke, 50 milliliters of rum, two slices of lemon, 10 cubes of ice. All right. But what if 
we don't want to make one drink, but a drink for many people. So we have to make several drinks. And how much stuff do we need? All right, so let's add an integer here. We call it number of guests. Let's call it five. Let's make it five. Let's assign the value of five. All right. So right now we have float. Float is the number and it's also a number. So we can make arithmetic operations on those numbers. For example, when we have amount of ingredients, amount of ingredients, one. Okay, for the clarity, let's put all of this stuff in one line. Like this, like this, like this, like this. So we've got four lines which are symmetrical. And now we want to do, what we want to do is, when we have the amount of ingredients, we want to multiply it by the number of guests. And that's it. But we have to multiply every amount. Otherwise it won't make, and it will make just little sense. Now we have five guests. As you can see, you will need 1.5 liters of Coke, one quarter of liter of room, 10 slices of lemon, and 50 cubes of ice. So far, so good. But programming is not about, you know, hard coding some variables and then having it calculate stuff. Let's make it more approachable. So let's make our app ask us what we want to do. First of all, let's ask, let's make the app ask how many people are there. So we'll handle basic input. In order to do that, we will write something like this. So here we have number of guests. Let's not initialize the value. It doesn't have a value. Okay, if it doesn't have a value, then you will have an error here because you cannot multiply a set value, a known value, but something that has no value at all. It is not said it equals to zero. No, it equals to nothing. And nothing multiplied by a number is an error in C sharp in, every, in nearly every language. So let's assign the value. And we'll assign the value of console.read line. However, there's a problem. Read line reads string. So we can, for example, read the title, all right, but we cannot. And the string that's read by the program is not the same as integer. We cannot say that integer equals to, for example, 10, when 10 is treated as a string of characters, like for example, this 2.0. We cannot do something like this. We have to use so-called parse function. In order to parse, so change from string to integer and vice versa. I mean, yeah, if you want to change from string into integer or string into float, etc., you need to use parse. In order to do parse, you have to call int, put full stop and parse. And here inside we put the string that we'll read in a moment. Let's run the application. As you can see, it waits, uh, it, it, it is waiting for us to put some number, five, for example, enter. And the calculation is good as previously. If we put one, sorry, put one, you can see that it is indeed multiplying by the number. However, we are not checking if the user makes an error. So if we put, for example, E, and put enter, we'll have exception, which is an error. It says it's unhandled because it was, we, we didn't put anything in the code that would prevent the code from the program from breaking. Now we have to stop the program and just, we have two approaches. 
either code some kind of safety net that will catch all the wrong answers or just hope that the user will not make a mistake. And as a matter of fact, in programming, you can never hope that user will not make a mistake. They will always do, they will always find a way to make mistakes, even by accident, especially by accident. So, but for the sake of this tutorial, let's leave it like this. We have to remember just to put a true number here. All right, so we know very basic input output, but let's make some kind of a decision algorithm. For example, let's say we have this one drink, but maybe we want to have another drink. We can do another drink like this. We copy this one. We name it differently, like not Cuba Libre, but like Mojito. However, as you can see, we cannot use the same name. Yeah, because we have already used this name. How to do this? Hmm. Well, in order to do that, I mean, there are very, there are many approaches. You could make just an, a, another variable, call it drink name two, drink name three, but it is cumbersome. Let's make it in a very elegant way, the way that object-oriented programming wants it to be done. So let's make a class. We have one class called program. Let's make another class. You can hide it by pressing minus and vice versa. Let's make a new class. Let's call this class drink. We put curly brackets after the class. And that's it. We have made our very first class. Welcome to Object Oriented Programming Course Class 101. All right, but we want to have a drink, an object of a drink, but we want this drink object to have a name. You know what? Let's take all this stuff, cut it and put it here, except of the number of guests, because it's It will be needed for, for this one. We don't want the errors to disturb us while we are working, so let's remove this one line of code. Okay, so we have a drink, all right? Let's do not assign any value. All right. So what I have done is I said that we have a class drink. It means that whenever I find it necessary or just whenever I want, I can call and make an object of a drink. And as a matter of fact, as you can see, here we are making objects of a class of string. String is also a class. Int is also a class. And right now we've made our very own and new class called drink. Let's make an example. Let's make an in, let's create a new instance of this drink class. So let's call drink and let's say it, call it Cuba Libre. Congratulations. You have created instance of a new class you have just created. However, we want to have this drink some data inside. There's no data here. How to do this? We cannot access these variables because they are by default, by default protected. Let's see, kubalib, we put full stop and we cannot get anything from it. So let's call this, let's put a keyword public here and everywhere as well. All right, so we have a public string. So right now this drink class have this drink class has four properties and those are variables of type of a string, array of string, array of string and array of float. Okay, so we have created our very first object. However, we have to assign a value. In order to assign a value of an object of a new class, we do something like this. New 
So we, we indicate that this Cuba Libre is a new object of a drink class and we call drink and put round brackets. This particular line of code you have to learn and memorize by heart because assigning objects is always like this. You have class name, you have your object, your, your new item name and you assign it a new uh, and you say you tell the compiler that you want to assign a value of a newly created drink object however right now you can say that cuba libre title uh, sorry name drink name equals to cuba libre and right now we can make console, we can check it, right line. Do you want to make, and we'll put the name of cubalibre.drinkName for plus number of guests plus people and let's run the application it is waiting for us to say how many let's say five do you want to make Cuba Libre for five people as you can see the application is indeed taking this new title we have already assigned and we it's using this object Cuba Libre of class drink however right now we can say that Cuba Libre dot ingredients equals to okay but in order to assign the ingredients we cannot do it by hand for example a b although it would be nice it is not possible we have to do it another way first possibility First possibility is that we'll call, we'll create a new variable, which will be an array. So string array ingredients, for example, inks equals to a, b, something like this. And then we assign the value. However, then what's the point of having this value here, ingredients, when we can have this, this array that's used right here. So in order to do that, and also we don't want to change this name every time, let's make a special method that's called constructor. So we have already called a method, as you can see, because every round brackets, every set of round brackets is always telling us, telling the compiler we are calling some method and we called the method drink. As you can see, we didn't call the class drink, we called method drink of class drink. So this is so-called constructor. Every class has a default constructor method. So we can make a new method, which will be constructor method is a kind of a different thing that's normal methods. Let's make a new one. Drink. And that's it. That's constructor method. As you can see, it tells us that there is already one reference and it's this one. Every class has a constructor method like this by default. We don't have to write it. But if we want to do something in this method, we have to write it and then put the code inside. So what we want to do is we want to say that every array consists of four ingredients. Or do we? So let's make a default one, which will make our drink consists of four ingredients. So here we go ingredients equals to string of four.
In order to do that, we have to call ingredients variable and then we assign it a new array of strings and its, its size is four. The same with unit of ingredients, new string four and amount new float four. However, in order to in order to assign every variable inside this array, we need to do it one by one. For example, Kumba Libra dot and then we assign ingredients array and then we call the first item and we assign it name of for example Coke. However, that's one way of doing it. Let's say that we want to have a possibility to choose a drink type. So let's say that when creating an object, we want to say create Cuba Libre, which is a Cuba Libre, or for example, Mojito. In order to do that, one, one way is using conditionals. What are conditionals? Conditionals is just a pure if keyword. So we put if keyword and then in round brackets, we put a logic term. For example, if one is bigger than zero, then code here is executed and in else is not executed because one is bigger than zero. So this is true and only this one is executed. This one is not. But let's say that we will pass some information here. In order to pass information, the information must be also here. We require that you pass string name of drink. Okay, but here we are not passing any name. So let's pass a name of Cuba Libre. All right, and then let's say if the name of drink that's passed equals to Cuba Libre, then we will assign all the stuff like ingredients and etc according to Cuba Libre recipe. Let's say maybe, okay, name of the drink. So ingredients equals to new string of size four, and then the interior of this array will be as follows. So it will be what Coke, it will be room, will be lemon, it will be ice, and then semicolon. The same happens with unit of ingredients and amount of ingredients. So let's code it. Okay, so it's not Coke, it's milliliters. And not unit, but amount. It's not string, but float. So it is three three hundred fifty. It's a weak drink, I know. It's a three and ten. All right. But what if the drink is not like this? then this code will be executed. So let's make a, a list of ingredients for another drink. This one will be Mojito. Mojito will make using Sprite, also room, 
lime and ice. And also what? Sorry, there will be five ingredients because we need also mint. Unit of ingredients also will be five. Sprite, room milliliter slices, cubes and mint will be in leaves. Amount for leaves. Or all, all right. Okay. So here we have Cuba Libre and we have something else. So whatever else we, we would write here would be great. But this is hard coded. It's all right. But let's do something like this. We just say we'll have my drink. All right. And let's let the user choose what kind of drink it is. You have to choose it, change it here as well. However, in order to choose the drink, we have to get some input. So we'll do the same thing as previously, but instead of number of guests, we'll call my drink equals new drink. And here we'll put console dot read line. But first let's make a new line here. What do you want to make? And when we run it, welcome to the bartender. What do you want to make? Let's make, let's say Cuba Libre. Ah, sorry. It fir first it reads the number of guests. So what do you want to make this thing? Then asking about number of guests and we'll have this line. Ah, as a matter of fact, I forgot to initialize the drink name. So let's add it here. If name of the drink equals Cuba Libre, then drink name equals to Cuba Libre, which is obvious per se, but still. And here drink name equals to mojito. Okay, let's run this. What do you want to make? Cuba Libre. Free people. Do you want to make Cuba Libre for free people? And then it's the end. But let's make another thing. If console dot write line dot sorry read line equals to yes um, round brackets so if the next line the application reads equals to yes then our console will say write line and what we want to, to say. Okay. What do you want? Um, sorry. And then read console read key. We want the application to pause, but else we'll say Sorry for bothering you. Let's run the application. What do you want to make? Cuba Libre, free people. Do you want to make? Yes. Okay. So we have this input, but what we want to do, let's make a new method inside the drink class. And this method will call here. And this method we will name public print. We'll call it print recipe.
but we need to choose the type of this method. If it's constructor, it doesn't require the type because it's of the type drink. And if it's a method that will do something, it's called void. Okay, so this method will do something. And what will it do? It will write to the console write line. It will write the recipe for this. You will need, you will need and what will we need? Right now, as you can, re as you remember, if it's Cuba Libre, then it has four items in every array. But if it's not Cuba Libre, it's Mojito, it has five. If we want to say something like this, you will need plus ingredients zero plus ingredients one it is good it is good if we choose even three but if we choose four it is not very good because this array does not have five items so it has no item with index array four in this particular case it does but if we say we want a cuba libre it doesn't have a fifth element so how to do something and a universal recipe that will always tell us all the ingredients, no matter how many are there. Let's use a loop. There are many loops. Four is the most basic loop. However, it will not be useful in this scenario. We want to use one of my favorite loops for each. So we put for each uh, keyword and then press tab twice. How does it work? For each iterates over every item that's inside some collection. This collection would be first ingredients. And as a matter of fact, let's say that item is a type of string. So for every string item in this array, we want to write line like this and we will write item. So here, instead of writing line, let's call this new method. So my drink and then print recipe. Let's see how it works. Cuba Libra. Three people. Yes. You will need coke, rum, lemon, ice. All right, that's all, that's very good. Let's write mojito. Let's write mojito. Three people, yes. You will need sprite room, lime, sprite room, lime, ice, mint. As you can see, it takes every item of this, of those arrays, I mean of this array at particular, and prints it to the console, which is very good. As you can see, let's add one more thing, which will be, first of all, asking about the number of guests, let's add console. So let's add a console right line. How many guests are there? Let's change it. Do you want me to show you the recipe for my drink for number of people. Okay, but instead of printing the recipe, let's make another function which will say, call it void print full recipe. And here we want to pass the number of guests. Of guests. What we now want to do is we want to copy this one. However, we'll write line with item, the string item. We don't want to use for each loop in this. We want to learn how to use for loop for this particular scenario. You, 
can do this as well. We put tab twice, we press tab twice, and the very default, very default loop is generated. I is the iteration variable. It starts at zero and goes up to some value, for example, 10, for example, five. But we don't want to hard code it. We want it to be the number of items inside those arrays. We, those arrays have the same length, so we can use only one of them. How to do this? Let's say ingredients, full stop, and we have length property gets the to total number of elements. If we put this, this array will trigger itself far, it will trigger itself four or five times depending on which, depending on which scenario we are working on. Right now, let's write console, write line, you will need maybe without this or with this. Plus ingredients i. So instead of putting some value, we put the current value. So we start at zero, then we do something here with the zero value. After it's done, we increase the number by one. By two pluses mean increase by one. So in, we increase the index, this iteration value, by one. So we start with zero, we go zero, then we increase it to, to 1, we put 1 here, then we increase it to 2, we put 2 here, it's still less than the length, the length is 4, so the maximum number we can use and we can work on is 3, so we can assign and use, so we can access all the values from 0 to 3, so all 4. So we'll use the ingredient, not ingredients, but amount. amount of ingredients multiplied by the number of guests that we'll receive while calling this function plus and then we want the unit of ingredients uh, also i plus of ingredients I. All right, let's see what this baby can do. So we don't want to print the recipe. We want my drink print full recipe. And we pa pass the number of guests. Okay, we run the application. Welcome to the bartender app. What do you want to make? Cuba Libra. How many guests are there? Five people. Do you want me to show you the recipe for Cuba Libra for five people? Yes, please. You will need and then everything is displayed as it should be. So as we can see, in one hour we have covered very big chunk of basics of programming in C Sharp. Okay guys, so we have created an application that serves some purpose, is logical, and it implements all the stuff that we have covered in today's tutorial. As a matter of fact, we have learned quite a lot. We have learned about variables, assigning and declaring them. We have learned about classes. We have learned about basics of input, output, we have learned something about syntax. We have learned about conditionals. We have learned about loops and also about methods and classes. So for one hour basics of C Sharp tutorial class, I believe we have done good job. Thank you guys for watching. If you want to learn more, then be sure to subscribe and follow my channel where I put and post more tutorials and more learning assets. This is just the beginning of your journey with programming. 
I suggest that you explore other materials I have on my channel, which will help you learn more and gain more knowledge in programming. Thank you guys for watching and see you in the next video.